get yourself some cotton gloves. Using the uh, whiteout that I have here, go ahead and put on the gloves and mark the tops of the fingers. Okay, so you can see that's where we would place the sensor. doesn't have to be perfect, but just close enough so you can uh, see where the, the sensor sleeves are going to be placed. To make the sensor sleeves, I'm actually going to use an old t-shirt. This is just a black cotton t-shirt. So I'm going to make some rectangle strips out of it. Should be good enough. Now I have a cutting board Oops. that I'm going to use so that I can square everything up. To make the sensor sleeves, each one of these strips should probably be about an inch wide. So I'm going to cut out one. It's roughly an inch. Like so. You want to fold it over and then using a sewing machine, just stitch the seam together. Now, it might not be a bad idea to actually iron these down, so let me do that too. Okay, and there's the first sleeve. That's it. So this is actually enough to do two. So just cut that in half. The next step is to actually adhere these to the gloves following these dot patterns. Leave enough overhang to fold these over the tips of the fingers. Now comes the step where we're going to actually adhere the sleeves to the glove. So I'll do the index and middle finger. Let's go ahead and just put a nice bead along that. And you could do all fingers if you'd like. Place the sleeves along that bead. Um, one thing to keep in mind though, and I didn't do this, 
uh, which you probably should, add some uh, cardboard spacers inside of the fingers themselves just to prevent the caulking from bleeding through into the other side. Just place those in each one of the fingers. Just make sure to press that down so that you see a little bit of uh, silicone kind of pressed out of the sides. This looks good. Just make sure that these follow those guide marks that you made earlier. These should get a little extra. It's probably good. I have all of the sensor sleeves sewn up. I'm gonna go ahead and attach those to the gloves. So just remember to leave a little overhang on each finger so you can fold it over. So let me go ahead and add a bead of silicone here. you should cut some cardboard strips and insert them in each one of the fingers. And just remember to add a little bit of silicone on the other side and fold the sensor tab over the ends of the fingers. And last is the thumb. So as you can see, that's kind of off-centered, so you might want to roll it a little bit. And that is one glove. So this is the uh, right hand. So same process. 
and again mark the tops of each finger. Now what I'm going to do is cut out uh, five cardboard strips. And now I can go ahead and uh, adhere the sleeves to the glove. Just run a bead along each one of the guide marks. And don't forget to leave a little overhang on each one of the fingers. And that's it. So now the only thing left to do is allow the gloves to cure. During this time, it may be desirable to begin 3D printing the hand tracker holders so that they will be ready in the next step. All right, it's now been about 24 hours and I've let these gloves dry uh, with some weights on top. And I'm gonna go ahead and check them out now. And yeah, that looks good. So yeah, these look, these look ready. Now in the next step, uh, what I'm gonna do is actually install the sensors into the sleeves. So I think I'd take these out. Try one on. Yeah, it looks good. Then with the tracker, yep, pretty good. So I think these will work very well. So I have here the last sensor. I've actually put the other nine together already. I have some helping hands to hold the sensor and some two pin JST connectors. I have some shrink wrap, my soldering iron, and uh, some solder. Uh, first thing is to grab some of the small 1 8 inch heat shrink and a full tube of 3 16 inch heat shrink. With these two, uh, what you'll want to do is put the 3 16 aside, but you'll want to cut two small pieces of the 1 8 inch heat shrink. Go ahead and install this on the wires. First tin the tip. Now we can solder the wires to the leads. Now polarity does not matter because this is just a simple resistor. Okay, let's check that. That looks decent. So now we can go ahead and apply some heat to the heat shrink here. All 
And now with the 3 16 inch heat shrink, install this over the sensor. And apply some heat. Uh, before it cools, I like to actually just kind of press it down, make it flat, just like the others. That is how you would assemble one of the flex sensors. Now simply insert the sensors into each one of the sleeves. You'll see at the end here, uh, don't push too hard. Let's go ahead and install all five. All right, so now that all of the sensors have been installed, uh, using the electrical tape, let's go ahead and secure them. Wrap the ends of the sensors like so. So there we go, all of the sensors have been installed. And it's now ready for uh, the final connection to the Arduinos and start uh, testing them in the motion capture tool. Okay, so now moving on to the wiring. What I have here is one Arduino Mega and 10 two-pin JST connectors and 10 20K resistors. I'm going to be following the first part of this connection guide, which is the wired mocap gloves. And then in the second part, I'm going to switch over to the wireless mocap gloves using this configuration. But for now, I'll just put this aside and focus on just the wired mocap gloves. One thing I want to do before attaching these directly to the Arduino, I actually want to attach some extension cables so that I can have the gloves some distance away from the controller. These are some cables that I found by taking some Ethernet cables and cutting off the ends. I was able to create the wires that I needed. I stripped the wires and then tinned all of the tips so that they're easy to solder to the board. So I'm gonna do that now. So what I'm gonna do is actually attach them to the reverse side of the Arduino. Now, according to this wiring diagram, what I have to do is connect them to the first five pins of this header and the first five pins of this header. So that would be pins A0 through A4 and pins A8 through A12. So let me flip this over. So these would be the first five. So let me attach these. Okay, so now all I have to do is attach the common grounds. So let's look on the other side. So it would appear that there is a ground here and a ground here, which is here.
So now what I have to do is the resistors. Fold one of these over and fold the opposite side over. And basically just solder these together. All right, so the last thing to do is just connect this side to the five volts. Using some jumper wire, Just connect this to the five volts. And now that is basically the same thing as that diagram. So all I have to do now is attach this to the JST connectors. I'm first going to strip each one of these wires back. connect the JST connectors to each one of these wires. But before doing that, I actually want to install some heat shrink on each one.
finally I can connect each one. All right, and finally, uh, just connect the common grounds. Before doing that, just be sure to uh, put a piece of heat shrink around it. So let's use a slightly larger piece. All right, so now that's one side completed. I'm just gonna go ahead and repeat the steps for the other one. Okay, and now moving on to the programming. As you can see here, I'm at GitHub for the MoCat Fusion gloves. And I have the Arduino plugged in to my PC. I've already downloaded the code. So I'm going to 
navigate to the Arduino IDE. Now for this example, I'm going to be following the wired gloves connection guide, which only requires one Arduino connected to a PC. As you can see here, I have this Arduino in an enclosure, and this is connected directly to the USB port on my PC. So now I'm going to upload this sketch to the Arduino. This is the first example, code example one, which is what I currently have loaded here in the IDE. I have the Arduino and the Atmega 2560 processor currently selected. All I have to do is press the upload button. And the sketch has been uploaded to the Arduino. So in the next step, all I got to do is connect these JST connectors to the gloves. To do that, I need to figure out which one of these corresponds to which one of these. The easiest way to accomplish that is by starting APS and navigating to the gloves panel. Then you need to select the proper COM port. To determine the COM port, first open the device manager and under ports, you should see the Arduino Mega listed here under COM4. So I'm going to select COM4 and click enable gloves. Now immediately, all of the values go to 100%. That's because there is no pull-down resistor currently connected. Now I need to start connecting each one of the JST connectors to the corresponding fingers. Starting with the thumb on the left glove, first connect it to any one of these, just to see what the result is. So that is the middle finger, and that is the thumb. So I'll keep that connected and move on to the next one. So now the index finger. That's correct. Move on to the next. The middle finger. That's correct. And the next is the ring finger. That's correct. And then last is the pinky finger. Okay, so that's all of the left hand sensors connected. So now I'll move on to the right hand. Starting with the thumb. The only thing left to do is calibrate. So first I'll calibrate the fingers closed.
And then finally, fingers open. Okay, so I'm now moving on to the second part where I'm going to switch over to the wireless mocap gloves and reprogram the Arduino for the code example two. So the first step would be to connect the NRF24 radio to the Arduino Mega. So I'm gonna follow this diagram, connecting each one of these pins according to this table. So as you can see, this is the way that I've soldered the jumper wires to the radio. Following the wireless mocap gloves connection guide example two, I'm going to first open the code example in the Arduino IDE. Now that you have the code open in the IDE, you can connect the Arduino to the PC. Check to make sure that the proper port is selected and the correct board. Then press upload. If you see this error that the NRF24 library is missing, just go to sketch, include library, manage libraries, search for RF24, and find the RF24 library, then install it. Once that's been installed, you should then be able to successfully upload the sketch to the Arduino. Now that we have installed the sketch on the glove controller, connect the Arduino Uno and upload the receiver code. So in the IDE, go to open, find the receiver code, and ensure to change the board type to Arduino Uno. Then upload. And that's it. In the last part of this example, I'm going to be following the third connection guide. This is example code number three. And for this example, I'm actually going to be using two bone Duinos and an Arduino Uno. So as you can see here, I've soldered the resistor network and two pin JST connectors. I have also a small lithium polymer battery inside of a pouch that I made from some scuba material. I've 3D printed a enclosure here that then you can tuck into the sleeve. First, let's connect this to the USB. So now I'm gonna open the code example number three and we'll start with the left glove. Before uploading the sketch, Ensure that you have the correct board and processor selected. For this example, I found that the Arduino Pro and the Atmega 3 volt 8 megahertz processor worked. 
Then just ensure that you have the correct port selected and you can upload the sketch to the board. Once that's completed, open the next code for the right glove and switch over to the other Bonduino. Just ensure that you have the correct port board and processor selected and upload the sketch. It is then necessary to update the code on the receiver board. So I'll plug this in. Opening the receiver code, ensure that you have the proper board selected which is Arduino Uno, and the correct COM port. After that, you can then upload the sketch. And that's it.